Washington, D.C. The year 2022 was a relic for the economy. Not in a nice way, either. It resembled the early 1980s or the 1970s at moments. Inflation is out of control. A not-so-cold war was fought between the United States and its allies in Europe and Russia. A depressing view that makes individuals uneasy and bitter. This outcome was not anticipated. The officials at the Federal Reserve almost appeared upbeat when they released their predictions for 2022 a year ago. They anticipated the U.S. economy recovering to a state that was something resembling normal after two years of turmoil caused by the pandemic. It turns out that the Fed's experts misjudged how salary rises, government assistance, supply constraints, and consumers' pent-up eagerness to spend would combine to drive inflation and keep it high. But more importantly, they failed to anticipate that Russian President Vladimir Putin would dispatch tens of thousands of troops to invade Ukraine in February of this year. This shocking act of aggression appended global trade in agricultural and energy products and sent prices for grain, oil, and natural gas skyrocketing. We would be in a very different position right now if not for the Russian invasion, according to Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics. We would have to wait for normal. It was by no means limited to the US. Nations all throughout the world were impacted by inflation. The International Monetary Fund anticipates that this year's global inflation rate will be 8.8%. The rate would be the highest since 1996 at that point. The impact of Putin's energy shock has been particularly severe across Europe. All around the continent and in the UK, consumer prices are soaring by double digits. Consumers' purchasing power has been severely reduced. Many people believe that a European recession in 2023 is almost certain. But as the year comes to a close, it appears that some relief may be on the way, perhaps hesitantly or reluctantly, but undoubtedly. The rate of inflation is gradually declining in Europe and the United States in particular. But for the time being, many people continue to experience difficulty as a result of rising costs. For American workers, inflation-adjusted hourly wages declined 1.7% in November versus a year earlier. It was the 20th month in a row that this number fell year over year. Food costs continued to rise even though overall inflation in the United States decreased in November for a fifth consecutive month. Coffee was 15% more expensive than it was a year ago. Eggs increased by an eye-watering 49%, frozen veggies by 18%, canned fruit by 21% and bread by 16%. Both large and small businesses are finding it difficult to control their costs and to decide whether and how much of their rising costs they can pass on to their customers in the form of higher prices. Schumar has switched from using one vendor to four in order to save money. Before placing an order, he searches each of their websites for the best discounts. To avoid the fuel costs imposed by suppliers, he often takes orders himself. Schumar added, before I spent more time in the dining room. That's what a family restaurant implies. Now I spend more time sitting here, looking at a computer screen, trying to keep costs down. Similarly, Logan's Roadhouse, a chain of 136 eateries, is dealing with a 28% rise in the cost of premium sirloin. It anticipates such prices to jump a further 20% early next year. Logan's substituted straight-cut fries for the more expensive waffle fries as part of another cost-cutting measure. Diners haven't resisted thus far. From a year ago, butter is up 42%. As a result, butter suppliers are bargaining with Kern's company. Instead of purchasing macaroni and cheese from a producer, the chain now makes its own. We took a look at everything in the cupboard, and we could make macaroni and cheese that was just as tasty, Kern said. Christian Stewart remarked, I've never imported before. Because the cost reductions are significant for a small business, I have to do it. Owner of the grocery chains Gristetas and Degostinos in New York, John Katsimatidis, laments that beef and chicken are now 30% more expensive than they were a year ago. The cost of fish is rising much more. The unexpected and unwanted return of inflation in 2022 wasn't the economy's only unexpected shift since early 2020. Rates were cut by the Fed and other central banks, and governments implemented massive expenditure plans to stimulate the economy. A spectacular rebound was the end result. With an abundance of government assistance, consumers, particularly in the United States, overspent on manufactured items like furniture, appliances, fitness equipment, video games, and more. Lack of supplies, sluggish shipments, and increased pricing were the results of the abrupt expenditure surge. 
Many of the employees that businesses had fired in early 2020 were recalled. Yet they were still unable to fill positions quickly enough to fulfill consumer orders. To try to recruit and retain workers, many of them dramatically increased wages. However, the supply shocks persisted month after month. Unusual occurrences occasionally interfered. Petrochemical manufacturing in Texas was halted by an unexpected freeze. The Suez Canal was blocked by a massive container ship, which disrupted trade between Asia and Europe. Taiwan's drought hampered the production of semiconductors. A nearly unheard of number of birds were wiped out by the avian flu. Together, these variables will cause inflation to rise consistently and reach multi-decade highs well beyond 2022. Daniel Swan, co-leader of the operations practice at the consulting firm McKinsey & Company, said, Some of this stuff you can't make up. I don't know what normal is anymore. The worst part was that Putin invaded Ukraine and destabilized the world food and energy markets. The Fed hopes that by raising interest rates, the economy will slow down just enough to bring rising prices under control without sending it into a recession, a historically challenging course of action. At least as the demand for produced goods declines, supply chains are gradually ironing out their kinks. Many ports that were stressed by backlogs at the beginning of 2022 are now running properly. According to Simon McAdam, senior global economist at Capital Economics, the reduction in shipping costs alone is projected to reduce worldwide inflation by half a percentage point. Even the 10% inflation rate in the 19 nations that shared the euro last month was lower than the 10.6% inflation rate in October. The government of the United Kingdom revealed that annual inflation decreased from 11.1% in October to a still unpleasant 10.7% last month. Since the beginning of November, oil prices have crashed, lowering gas costs. According to AAA, the average price of a gallon of unleaded gasoline on Thursday was $3.19, down from $5.02 in mid-June. Despite all of this, the battle against inflation is far from over. Some economists are concerned that continued worker shortages, particularly in labor-intensive service industries, would maintain upward pressure on salaries and prices. In 2023, inflation will likely have peaked and be lower than it was in 2022, according to Jason Furman, a Harvard economist who served as President Barack Obama's top economic advisor. The issue is that the Fed would still consider lower to be too high whether it was 3% or 4%. Additionally, decreasing prices are a result of the economy's deterioration.